Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from narcissistic relationships. And today we're going to talk about broken hearts. So the question really is, can we, le can we learn about broken hearts, like traditional healing from broken traditional or healing from traditional broken hearts? Can that help us with healing from narcissistic relationships? Sit with that question for a minute. And while you do, I'm just going to take a minute to tell you Talk about something that'll help you heal from broken hearts. My new book coming out February 20th, It's Not You, Identifying and Healing from Narcissistic People. Please, all of you who subscribe on YouTube, please check it out. And anyone who pre-orders the book and verifies their purchase with us will get access to a lot more than just the book. You're going to get access to like a six hour course on gaslighting. You're going to get access to a Facebook group that's just devoted to the book launch and conversations with people who are going through this. You're going to get um, access to a, a, a series of expert interviews on the book and early access to a chapter. So the links to order and verify your purchase are in the video description. So let's talk about broken hearts here. You know, recently I talked about broken hearts, the broken heart of the narcissist on this channel. And the punchline was a narcissist broken heart is often a bruised ego. But the question to you is what about you? Has your heart ever been broken by a narcissistic person? If you're watching this channel, I'm going with the odds are yes. Now we usually reserve the term broken heart for a romantic relationship. So let's just stay focused there. It can be in other areas, but let's just stay focused there. The broken heart that's caused by an intimate, romantic, committed, call it what you will relationship with a narcissistic person. So first of all, when we're going through a broken heart, we will hold on to anything to get some help. And you may have turned to the traditional stuff about broken hearts. And there are some really good books out there. There's actually quite a bit of neuroscience about there and that whole dopamine thing and even how the immune system is affected and cardiovascular effects. This idea that your heart is actually broken. But even that doesn't begin to scrape the surface of a narcissistic broken heart. But it helps to think about this if you have already had both kinds of broken hearts. So let's say you've had a broken heart in a relationship with a narcissistic person, and you've also had your heart broken in a relationship or by a relationship with someone who's not narcissistic. If you've had both of these heartbreak relationships, you know the difference. It can be tempting to label anyone who breaks your heart as narcissistic but we all know that that's not necessarily true. People can hurt us and not be narcissistic. And sometimes we are the reason that a relationship falls apart. Even if we cause the breakup through our, our behavior, the fact is we can still experience a broken heart. And while in the macro, in the larger scale, a broken heart is a broken heart, I do think it varies depending on what led to the broken heart. A broken heart, because someone cheated on you, for example, will feel different than a broken heart that you experience because you grow apart or you break up because, because of life circumstances, you can't live near each other. So this video actually came from, and it was stimulated by an article I recently read in the LA Times, where the writer of the article was talking about his own broken heart and trying to heal it. I was trying to figure out what happened and he, I just have no idea why his heart broke. And I guess it's his story to tell. He chose not to tell that part of it. He only shared that his broken hearted story happened suddenly and that their relationship ended suddenly. And it happened after they'd only been living together for a month. So I didn't fully understand sort of the story around his broken heart, but his heart was broken, right? And as part of his process of healing, he talked to all kinds of academic scholars and anthropology and neuroscience and he learned a lot of the sort of scientific fundamentals of a broken heart from a science and physiological lens, stuff that we've known for a while. He interviewed people who called it suffering. He looked at uh, Guy Winch's work, who calls it disenfranchised grief. People who've been through narcissistic abuse, by the way, know more about disenfranchised grief, the grief that's not recognized, than anybody out there, by the way. Then that there's shame and isolation that comes with a broken heart. He interviews Florence Williams, who says that recovering from heartbreak has to happen. We can't just sit in that heartbroken state forever because the longer it stretches out, we get vulnerable to getting sick. 
that a broken heart is a stressor and that rumination and all the stuff that goes with it creates all kinds of vulnerabilities. The article also does a nice job of getting into the biology of even simple things that just looking at old pictures can get the old dopamine flowing and create that kind of ecstatic dopamine feeling. And when they're taken away, that person is taken away, we crave them. And that of course sounds like the trauma bond. The article also cited UCLA's Dr. Naomi Eisenberger's wonderful research on how rejection and physical pain share pretty similar real estate in the brain. And since a narcissistic relationship is basically a daily exercise in rejection, bam, it hurts not only your feelings, but your brain is reacting as though you've been physically hurt. And overall, this tells us that physiologically, these relationships take a toll on us. This isn't just about being anxious and confused and blaming ourselves. This is about physically getting sick. The article then gives some tips on healing. And I read them curiously to see how they may line up with the healing, the healing process or healing from a broken heart caused by a narcissistic relationship. So the writer of the article says that he was given five suggestions, five things to do to heal. And I sat with these five suggestions because I wanted to think about how they may play a role in also healing from narcissistic relationships and sort of see, could they work? So the first suggestion he got was throw out all the old pictures and other memories. I liked this one a lot. You know, I always want people to do that after a narcissistic relationship. And on top of that, if there's only one thing I would encourage survivors to do is to block the narcissistic person on social media and maybe even a lot of the people in your world who follows them because you don't see their stuff, right? And this is easier said than done, but it's sort of a weaning off and seeing the narcissistic person's Teflon ability to just move on can slow your healing. However, don't be hard on yourself if you can't do it. Some survivors beat themselves up saying, it's my fault, I keep looking at their social media, it happens, everyone does it. It's really hard to go cold turkey. Sometimes it can help to enlist a friend to help you do the blocking, do it over time, take, it, take your time with it, but do it slowly. The second, calm your nervous system. I talk about that a lot, even in my new book I talk about that, and break out of that sympathetic nervous system activation. This is good for survivors of narcissistic broken hearts. Again, I write about this a fair amount in the book, in my book about healing from narcissistic relationships. These relationships have us on high alert all the time. And all of that hypervigilance is terrible and it causes a lot of wear and tear on us and our bodies. Figure out what works for you to calm yourself. Meditation, breathing, mindfulness, exercise, a nap, a shower, playing Candy Crush on your phone, simple grounding exercises, reading inspirational books, something that helps you center and pulls you away from that acute sense of rejection and abandonment and panic. The third idea, which is narcissism healing number 101, is social support and connection with others. Again, that which heals a broken heart also, appeals, or also appears to heal the wounds of narcissistic abuse. But creating social support is tougher for survivors than it is for other folks. Some of you in narcissistic relationships were isolated by the narcissistic person, which means you are starting from behind square one. Some of you don't trust yourself socially. Others of you don't feel worthy. However, you can do this, and it doesn't need to be that you're adding 50 people to your life. Even if just a few folks that see you, that offer empathy and kindness, and take yours in and give some back is a lifesaver and can rewrite the book on what a human relationship can be about. This may also entail seeking out therapy. You may join a support group, but yes, social support, great for all kinds of broken hearts. The next thing they bring up is a sense of meaning and purpose, that thing you get out of bed for every day. This matters a lot in healing from narcissistic abuse. And this gets lost in narcissistic abuse because for so long, a lot of a survivor's life has been appeasing, making sense of, pleasing, winning over, and recovering from the behavior of the narcissistic person. It basically becomes a full-time gig. And what gets lost are the other things that matter in life. Healing means 
finding you or discovering you, yourself, for the first time and what grabs you, interests you, matters to you. And this doesn't necessarily just mean your job. It may be your garden, your dog, paintings that you make in your garage, poems you write. It may be, it may be your job. It may be a volunteer gig. It may be doing a crossword in ink every day. It may be reading your way through all of a particular author's books or listening to all of a musician's albums. Figure it out, but have something that makes you want to face the day, even when it feels unfaceable. And for survivors of narcissistic abuse, that means thinking this way, meaning and purpose for the first time in a long time. One of the suggestions I thought was really great, which is the sense of awe, that sense of something bigger outside of you. The author of this article in the LA Times cites Dr. Uh, Keltner's work from UC Berkeley, who writes about the idea that awe is the thing that inspires you and reminds you of the bigger world that's around you. It can be art in a museum, a night sky, a symphony you listen to, a butterfly and a flower, a passage from a favorite book, a film, something that makes you literally say, ah, wow, and ah kind of um, rhymes with awe, right? Narcissistic relationships leave us looking down all the time or just as far as the narcissistic person's face in our eternal quest to please them. But tuning into that bigger thing outside of you, it could be spiritual, it could be aesthetic. I thought about this, what gives me awe? And my awe comes from the phases of the moon, the magenta color of a hummingbird's throat, the novel I am reading, and that someone can make words do what this lady does with them. This pink sunset I saw the other day, that made the sky look like fire. Those things, small things, inspire awe. Survivors need to learn to see the horizon beyond the gaslighting. And even if you don't leave the relationship, this idea of awe is there for you to heal any kind of broken heart, including one from a narcissistic relationship. I'm going to put the link to the article that I read that inspired me here in the video notes. But if you don't, you may not be able to open it if you don't have a subscription to the LA Times. But listen, I feel for the guy who wrote this. I hope he lands on his feet. I thank him for the inspiration I got here. And I was grateful to have to reflect on the ultra broken heart that is the broken heart of a narcissistic relationship. But the healing part, it's similar, but it's harder. Whereas anyone with a broken heart is struggling, the wounds and the confusion of narcissistic abuse may mean that a survivor is a few steps back in terms of having to dig deeper and find that meaning and purpose to lift their heads to that sense of awe. The trauma bonds make that social media scanning seem almost reflexive. But even though broken hearts and narcissistic relationships can set us back, there is hope and for once, that hope is not about the narcissistic person changing, but rather about you excavating yourself from this psychological mess of confusion and recognizing that one day you will feel more clear and notice those sunsets, sunsets and connect with new folks and not be on edge and realize that you didn't feel the need for 24 hours to check their social media once. Broken hearts do heal, but in the process of healing can take a minute. And for those of you who are healing from broken hearts from a narcissistic relationship, that minute can be a lot longer. Thanks again.